We would love our wildlife to be protected. Uh, we would also not want farmers waking up to the sight of their lambs brutally attacked by jackal and caracal. It is an age-old dilemma that now has government proposing new norms and standards. But are they on the right track? Some of the visuals are disturbing. Here's Chantal. Turf wars between farmers and predators are nothing new, and scenes like these with this jackal only serve to fuel the deadly conflict. On the other hand, when a leopard is exposed to an easy food source and instinct kicks in, this is what can happen. It's called surplus killing. Over the years, carte blanche has reflected both sides of this battle between man and beast. In the past, the quest to keep the enemy at bay led to the extermination of larger predators. And we took out the alpha predator right at the top of the feeding chain, which is the lion and the, and, and the hyena. Those animals determined the lesser predators, which are on the second tier of the feeding chain, which are jackal, caracou, leopard. And they became labelled problem animals and even vermin. And with that, the hunt was on. The impact on South Africa's biodiversity was devastating. But to Pietras de Vet, a mixed stock farmer and president of the Wool Growers Association, it's justified. It's the biggest single factor that we fight uh, to keep our production alive is uh, fighting predators. Ten years ago, mohair farmers produced just over 4 million kilograms. By last year, that figure had dropped to just 2.6 million kilograms. Stock farmers blame most of their losses on jackal and caracal. The decision I made was a difficult one, but it was a choice of two. And either you fight the enemy or you protect your animals. Roy Heinrich's business is mainly mohair. He farms with about 3,000 angoras and 2,000 sheep near Jansenville, north of Port Elizabeth. He used to lose about 500 of his stock to jackal each year and would hunt them down until he realized it was pointless. I changed my mind one night when we were killing seven and I realized that if I must work a day and at night time hunt these animals, I'm working 24-7 and I'm not going to get ahead of it. So he decided to protect his livestock from jackal by using Anatolian shepherd dogs, descendants of ancient guardian dogs from Turkey. By bringing in the Anatolian shepherd dog, Roy says he saved himself more than 200,000 rand in stock loss a year. I sleep peacefully at night. My animals are not being attacked. The, the predator can survive. I only use 4% of my land. When for the 96% of the land, he can roam and do what he wants to, he can catch the, uh, his natural prey. But the holistic approach isn't for everyone. The Wool Growers Association estimates that more than 6,000 incidents of predation occur on farmlands daily. I'm telling you that if this problem goes unchecked within 10 years, the small stock industry in South Africa is going to be extinct. In a recent study, Free State University worked out that predators wipe out about 1.3 billion rand of stock each year. Jackal are responsible for 60% of this, caracal about 30%, and 10% is blamed on feral dogs and stock theft. We think that the predator numbers have doubled in the last 20 years, and this is why we're sitting in a situation which is out of control. In 2008, farmers demanded from former Environment Minister Martinez van Skalkweg uniform provincial legislation to deal with predators. In November last year, the department published draft norms and standards for the management of damage-causing animals. It's caused an uproar all round. For our faunal diversity, I think it's a disaster. Um, and uh, I think, you know, in the absence of legislative controls, uh, we certainly are left with consumer pressure. Well, I think it falls short of what we need because we haven't changed anything from what we've been doing to try and counteract predation in 300 years. Rob Harrison White has been conducting research on jackals for the past 13 years. Five of them spent working on farms with top lethal control experts. He soon found out that deadly controls weren't the solution. He also worked with the task team formed by the department but says that their recommendations were largely ignored. It was a shock because we had a task team that worked with DEET for over a year and we put all the latest research and previous research on the table which indicates, for example, that gin traps are not an effective tool to manage predators on farmland. And yet we see them again in the norms and standards. That doesn't make sense. So why has the department gone this route, which conservationists say will lead to wholesale slaughter? The misconception that's there is that it's focused on, for example, allowing certain lethal methods. And that's not the focus of the document. Tia Carroll, a director of the Department of Environment, says the legislation is to guide those dealing with threatened or protected species like leopard and brown hyena. 
the norms and standards at the moment relate to species that are managed in terms of the threatened or protected species regulations, which does not include blackback jackal and caracal. Lethal control methods like hunting dogs and gin traps have been given the green light, even though traps are banned in much of the world. The problem is that the method is indiscriminate and, in, and it, it, it affects both threatened and protected species, uh, never mind any bycatch and innocent animals. Over the past six years, Dr. Will Smuts, president of the Landmark Foundation in the Eastern Cape, has saved 28 leopards from the jaws of death in the Bavians Kloof. This footage was taken during a rescue attempt last year. The farmer had set the gin trap ostensibly for what they call vermin and other animals, uh, which the law allows them to caracal and, and jackal. Absurdly, say conservationists, the draft document states that methods used to control damage-causing animals need to be socially and ecologically acceptable and aimed at targeting the individual predator. We tried to rescue it um, and in fact got it through the initial um, release but it's cardiac arrested in the process. What type of trap is this leopard caught in? This is a, um, a trap called the Terminator trap, which is a gin trap manufactured in Prince Albert. And according to the new legislation, what is so worrying is that this has been renamed as a soft trap. In terms of the threatened or protected species regulations, gin traps are prohibited, but gin traps are defined. So a specific tool or instrument is defined as a gin trap. And to enable the use of another type of trap, uh, we had to come up with a different term. And this is the impact. So what's the difference? By virtue of the fact that it's got a slight gap in the teeth, which is exactly what that uh, trap has had, because the, the trigger plate, which is this thing, the animal steps on that plate, can be fastened, and because it's got spring spring loaded, and it's got several swivels on the, the chain. That apparently makes it a soft trap. It's a specific design, so the trap will have specific specifications um, that is aimed at reducing the chances of an animal getting hurt when it's caught in the trap. And how long would it take for a trap like this to cause permanent damage? Well, on the vascular side of the limb, it takes four hours from the cut of the blood supply to gangrene setting in. That means ischemic hypoxic tissue damage. Now some of the other permanent damage that may occur may happen immediately with tendon and bone, bone injuries and, and ligament injuries. The document at least attempts to regulate control methods like gin traps, poison and cage trapping if species are threatened or protected. So you will need to get a permit and it must be a trained person that will do that and that person um, must be trained by the issuing authority and will have a system to register these people. It's impossible for the department to physically get out and check every single incident. So it's ludicrous. But what's more bizarre is that jackals and caracal aren't afforded any protection in the proposed regulations, so permits aren't required. So what's stopping a farmer from using a gin trap, killing a leopard and then saying it was meant for a jackal? Another major flaw in the document is the department's stamp of approval of dog hunting, presently prohibited in the Animal Protection Act because it's so cruel. Well, the intention in the document is to only allow the use of dogs for tracking um, a wounded animal or flushing an animal and so forth. The intention was not to allow the actual hunt to be conducted by a dog. While conservationists argue that the document doesn't offer adequate legislation, farmers want less. What we're we requesting is leave us. Let us use that toolbox. On the one end of the spectrum, we've got donkeys, alpacas, Anatolians, gin traps, hunting at night. Where gin traps fail, you've got to get in there and shoot them. Where shooting fails and the population is too big, you've got to get in there on a larger scale. And this means shooting predators from a helicopter. We have reported there was a mass culling of, of predators from the air. It's carrying on to this day. Uh, some of the farmers are just doing it. Um, they spend about three to four thousand rand just to hire the helicopter per hour uh, and then get paid per animal they shoot. These farmers would get together and they would say, listen, let's get in there and let's knock this population down to acceptable levels so that we can deal with our losses. And this indiscriminate control method doesn't even feature in the document. It's being done uh, with the necessary authorizations and I understand that they also require some reports to be submitted to see what the impact will be. If you don't kill predators, it doesn't mean they're going to, their populations are going to explode. They have their own natural 
inhibition mechanisms that stops their uh, populations increasing. While internationally human shepherding has made a comeback, farmers here seem determined to do it the lethal and less humane way. We will reduce the number of predators in this country. We will. Because if we don't, I'm going to go out of business and you're going to be out of food. And one day, out of wildlife too.